Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our information session on the BSC IT program. Um, this is the newest and most affordable BSC in Sharon and Tobago. So I just want to welcome you guys. Um, looking forward to seeing you guys and even helping you guys on your journey with us. So as we begin, I'm going to talk about our speakers. Um, we have Mr. Ravi Raghunath, who is the executive director. This is his phone number and his email. Um, my name is Aaron Narius. This is I'm the program manager for the BSC IT program. This is my phone number and email address. And this is Mr. Val Mickey. Um, he's the program administrator. Can this uh, you guys hear me, right? Some persons in the chat sitting are hearing me. Yes, we're okay. here. All right. And so this is Mr. Valmiki's uh phone number and email. But if you can't remember all this information, if you want to get through to us, we do have a group email, and that is bsc at ctscollege.com. So I'm just gonna pause here if you want to take note of any of the numbers. But just remember for the email address, you can reach all of us at bsc at ctscollege.com. I just want to verify, Candice, you still, can you hear me now? Amir, are you hearing me? I've seen some guys in the group. Yeah, Candice especially. I sent oh, a yeah. screenshot. So, well, thank you so much, man. That's that's awesome. So Mr. Jesus has sent a screenshot in the group, in the chat. So you guys can take note of it there. So I want to ask you guys a question. Why study a degree? Why study a BSc? Doesn't have to be IT, doesn't have to be anything related or like a business or anything, but why study a Bachelor of Science? Why get a degree? Kimberly not hearing. Well, the short end of it is it looking good, but also I'm doing a trade in school right now, I'm doing mechatronics. So I'm thinking that this degree will add to that and I'll be able to get a better job. I also awesome. like IT in general, so um, I could fall back on that, and there's a lot of industries where I can enter and fall in. Awesome. Anybody else? I love those, I love those answers. You could trade up in the chat as well, right? Always love IT, want to get more in-depth in IT and pursue a better future. Yes, that's awesome. Thank you, Mr. Valmiki. So anything else? Hi, good morning. Um, when I, I just thought this was a great opportunity to learn something new, you know. Oh yeah, that's one. Yeah, the opportunity. What is? Yes, and that's so true. Ethan, he said, I notice most job asks for bachelors when it comes to IT, but even generally, you see that trending. Uh, the the asking for bachelors on the whole, no matter what um sector of the job market it is. So we ask this question and we get uh, some feedback that is kind of general across the board. So number one, which is high on the list is promotion. So people do their bachelors to get a promotion. Um, a career change, we have some students right now um, in our IT degree that are looking to change the career. Of course, increased salary. Anybody would love to have more money at any month. Uh, even start or grow your own business. Um, some person even do it for a uh, personal achievement. So we he had like a, a father who was over 80 years old and he just put his kids through university and he just did a degree for, for himself for personal achievement because he had retired already. And well, for practical experience in IT field. Also, it can enhance employability. 
I had one student, he was saying he was sending his resume out um, a lot. And as soon as he got his degree and added to his resume, he started to get short um, calls a lot more. So it enhances employability. So I want to show you something based on the OGT salary. And I know cost is a factor to start a degree. But sometimes we focus so much on costs that we don't see it as an investment and we forget the benefits of an investment. So I want to show or I want to share with you some uh, about investing in you. Can you go back? I want to take something. Okay, no problem. Is this slide you're talking about, right, Mariah? Yes, sir. Just remember, I'm going to send this to you afterwards, right? So you could also open it up and take how much notes that you like. But I can wait if you can. Well, you don't need to. You can say it's on it. You can proceed. Okay. No problem. So look at these salaries for OJT. And this is just based on their um, qualifications, right? So for CSEC, with CXC, someone could get to teach basically 3000 a month. When you do CAPE and you go to OJT, basically you get 4300 With an associate's degree, it bumps it up a bit. You get almost 40, uh, 5500 With a bachelor's degree, you get 7500 And how about with a master's, you get 7800 So I want to ask you, I don't mean to do a math test right now, but how much more would someone be uh, earning with a bachelor's degree versus a CSEC with CSEC? alone it don't have to be the exact figure you can just give me a ballpark over four thousand dollars more yeah so when you look at the figures you get 4500 and um someone in chat said 4500 which is very close awesome job to you so how much do you think you will earn more in a year? Anyone want to give it a shot? Over 48,000. So, yeah, it's around 54, 55,000 thereabouts. That's how much you will earn more in a year. And over a lifetime, see that you work 40 years and your salary would never increase, which was, which is highly um doubt it would it, it will increase over time but let me just say it never increases over 40 years you would earn basically 2.1 million and they also say that it, you can earn as much as 6 million over a lifetime with a bsc so imagine how much your children and even your children children could benefit so i also want to point out to you that even when you work for in one year you can actually um, cover your degree so you'll get to your re a return investment for your degree within one year after your, your studies so the jobs of tomorrow um the world economic forum basically shows us that it is displacing jobs over the next five years so the workforce is automating and displacing almost 85 million jobs within the next five years and we all went through COVID-19 recently, and it kind of double disrupted that automation, the scenario for workers. And companies also said that they were willing to adopt technologies. Actually, 43% of businesses said that, that just to reduce their workforce, they want to integrate technology. So look at some of these, right? So the demanding, decreased demand for data entry clicks, and there's an increase for data analysts and data scientists. There's a de decrease for administratives and executive secretaries. There's an uh, increase for AI machine learning specialists. So you can see that where IT is basically um, replacing some of these jobs of tomorrow. So within the next five years, some of these jobs might not be even on the um, job market. You'll hardly find these. So I wanna show you some local examples. And we have Marcy stores right after COVID. Right now, we have Marcy stores have their app. Before, they didn't really have a mobile app or even where you could shop online. We also have KFC, which is our national um restaurant. <laughs> One question, I'm sure it'll be explained in degree. 
So yeah, the degrees around the software development, software engineering path. Thank you for that question. And even the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. So I, I had an instant where I was calling Mario's a day and I was trying to get you to Mario's to order pizza. And I wasn't getting through to them at all. So I just downloaded the app, um, ordered the, the, the two pizzas, two large pizzas, paid my credit card, and it came straight to my door. And I realized that, you know, I bypass someone who is in Mario's and Saudi, the, the operator. And this is where how technology kind of displaces um jobs. So as well, um, people need persons to develop these apps, to design these apps, because people don't like a app that's hard to use. And the degree kind of covers that, and I'll show you that a bit later. So right locally here, we, we see technology kind of trending. It kind of displacing some jobs. So our IT degree is offered by the University of Bedfordshire. So CTS College is teaching the program, but the program is awarded by the University of Bedfordshire in the UK. Just as CXC is in Barbados, but you didn't do CXC directly um, in Barbados itself, but you got awarded from um, CXC in Barbados. So you did your CXC local here in your schools, but the, the award comes from Barbados. So, I'm going to show you why I study with the University of Bedfordshire. So, the University of Bedfordshire has over a hundred years in education. They have over 120 students from all around the world, over 120 countries. They have five campuses in the UK. Their educational partners are in China, Middle East, Europe, South East Asia and even Trinidad and Tobago. And I think they have one right now in Guyana as well. They are internationally re re renowned university. They are top um 6% of the best universities in the world. And they got the highest award for university, which is the Queen's Anniversary of Prize in 2013. So they have a rich um history in education. They are one of the best in the world. Also, yeah. So before you continue, would you prefer the camera or for does it not matter? Oh, it 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 it's your preference. I took off mine just to save some bandwidth, but it's your preference. Right. So before I continue to why study at CTS College, so I want to know anyone here would be new to CTS College once they start this program. You have never done anything with CTS College before. You could raise your hand, you don't have to unmute. You could just do the raise hand feature on, on Zoom. Well, I could see your camera, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Sure, that would be me. Okay, I see the hands now, awesome. Well. So we have about nine persons so far. And well, counting, he's just 10, 11, 12. Oh, awesome, guys. Thanks so much for your feedback. So we love to have new students or new persons who can experience the CTS experience with us. Like a few, a few in the chat as well. Awesome, guys. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. So... I want to go through why I study at CTS College and our motto is where the education is beyond the academics. So we are a private institution. We have over 22 years in the education industry. We are ACTT recognized. Um, we offer programs, a wide range of programs. So we have from preschool, we have a primary school, we have a secondary school, we have diplomas, we have a bachelor's, a bachelor's degree, and we even have masters. And we have a wide range of short courses as well from IT, personal development, business, and even do-it-yourself courses like balloon decoration, um, cake decorating, and these other stuff. All right? Why is CTS not better known in Trinidad? What's that? Repeat? Why is CTS not better known in Trinidad and Tobago? Why is CTS is what in Trinidad and Tobago? Why is it not better known? Better known? Yes. Oh, what 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 we found is that yes, we advertise. We have all this um content on our social media and stuff, but our most of our students come from word of mouth. 
So someone will tell someone about their experience. I had a, a, a met with a parent this week that they told me that their um son-in-law, um, no, the sister-in-law did a program by us and they recommended us. So that's kind of one reason why we are not that known. We are more word of mouth, mm. not as much as um heavily advertised online. But if you look at where uh, we are, so yeah. It looks very, it's very intriguing to me. I really want to do it, but at the same time, I have to make sure you're not scamming, man. So, <laughs> do you do you have any people working in the industry currently who could um who could vouch for CTS? Yeah, um, I can get some numbers to you after if you like. We have great relations with our students, and they would vouch for us. Hmm. So. Why is not US recognized? So the the University of Bedfordshire is UK recognized. They are credit. I'll go through it a little after, but I'll answer it still. So they are the the program that you're doing, the bachelor's degree is worldwide, is will is internationally recognized, is recognized all over the world. We had students from Canada, um, a guy who's working in Chicago as an IT manager. We had a student from Africa, we have students right now in Jamaica. Um, one guy working in the United Nations in Barbados. So we have students from all around the world and they're in the working field as well. So thanks for that question. We don't have a South Campus. We are only located in Shogunas, but we all of our, most of our classes are online, especially this degree is purely online. And I'll go through those information after as well. So thanks for those questions, guys. If I have to give an award for the most interactive session I had, I think this will be it. <laughs> So this is about this is about CTS College and this is a little about our bragging. This is our bragging page. So we have won over 117 ABE World Prizes. So ABE is a diploma in business. And to get a world prize means that this the 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 score or the, the mark of the paper is the top in the world. So we have we receive over 117 world prize since 2017 in ABE, which means 117 of our students of the papers. Um, they scored the top in the world. We win over 50 of our university awards, university ahead for share, which means their paper as well stop for stop in the, um, top in the world. Um, we win off two ABMA academic achievements. And with ACTT right here, the Peritation Council of Trinidad and Tobago, they, they hosted a quite award, which means quality in tertiary education. But due to budgetary constraints, now they have stopped having these awards. But when they had these awards, CTS College won was a, um won more awards than any other school in Trinidad. So we have won three in three categories: six in student support, three in excellence in quality management system, and two for excellence in teaching and learning. So this kind of shows us um we are all for our students. We our support team is here, and we we are willing to go the extra mile for you guys. So we had we have experience in delivering a BSc in IT. So over the past fifteen years, we have been we had a BSc program, especially in IT. We actually started with the BSc in IT initially, and we branched branch off to other units, other courses. Our average pass rate is over ninety percent per module. We have over two thousand applica applicants, um, over seventeen fifty BSc um graduates with six hundred in first class honors. And graduates employ in various sectors and various industries in different levels. And I want to show you uh results from one of our last semesters. So you can see level four, level five, and level six. And look at the pass rates. We have 96, 99, 95, 92 in level five, and look at level six. Every single person pass their unit in level six. So level four and level five is only two units. In total? Well, this was for one semester. So each semester, you'd be doing two units each. So in this semester, the persons in level four was doing these two units. In level five, they were doing the other two units. And well, level six, we have a combination of persons who was in the first semester and persons about to graduate. So How they share units. units are in total? Two, four, six, eight, ten. There are 12 units in all. Okay. All right. So overall, hi, no problem. Hi. Um. Okay. Um. 
why it is CTS not on the accredited site? Because I haven't, I, I went up on the accredited site and no CTS, very few schools on there. Okay, I'm going there as uh, well. That's A C T T, right? Yeah. And um a next thing, do you suggest, you know, somebody, any particular course from CTS before you do this? If you just come you... with CT CT yeah, classes. We, we do have a certificate in software engineering program. That will go through a bit a little after, but there are five sets in that program that will allow you to qualify for degree with just CSEC results. So guys, I just want to show right, you um... one thing. No problem. So we are a registered institute. Um, the difference between registered and what's the next one they had? And accredited. Accredited means that they would the institution offer their own program. I remember I told you before. We don't offer, this program is not our program. We don't even offer our own programs, especially in the tertiary level. We partner with the universities from the UK. Uh, we are here, um, and I must tell you, even though the date is an old date, we went through the process of um, um, renewing our uh, standard. They gave us an extension, so we, we did went through the process of renewing. And I believe it's up to it's on CTS now, um, ACTT to update their site and stuff. So I believe we we did get renewal, but I, I guess they didn't update their site as well. So we are on actually under the registered. As I said, if you go under the accredited, you mightn't see as much because these are these are schools that do their own program. Actually, it's only one. And well, there are a few here. So like U UTT, UE, even Custard, so let's be wrong, um, yeah, Custard, they offer their own programs, they develop their own programs. So they would be accredited while we would be registered to offer the programs from the UK programs, University of Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire. Cool. So, I'm moving on. Does this school yeah. offer connections in terms of job placement after completing so, the degree? So throughout your degree and even after, I I do get emails from employers looking for um well showing that they have job openings and we would send to our students. So we get a lot of like What's that? Towards, it's not towards a specific person. It's not towards a specific person, but it's for anybody who wants to apply for it. Yeah, but they choose CTS um, over the others. And we did have some students that get internship through the school as well. But um, mm -hmm. the, the more um, regular one is those job up, um, openings. And what is the criteria to get internship? Um... I know Mr. Ravi Raghunath went through that with some students, but I believe once they're on a semester break or even through the program, they would allow persons to intern once they start a degree. All right. Thank you. All right. So I want to show you guys some features of the BSc, right? So when we're looking for a BSc in IT, students and employers kind of share what they would like from the program. So um, students, of course, they wanted the program to be accredited. So they can work anywhere in the world. Some students, you know, have to travel for work and other reasons. So they wanted a program that's accessible in any part of the world. Employers also wanted a program that's practical because when they hire people, they want the skills and theory to apply in the workplace. For students, if I ask you, you want to, you, do you want a degree tomorrow? Most of you would say yes, but unfortunately it doesn't, it doesn't take that fast. But we do have one of the fastest accelerated degrees in Trinidad. And for everyone, price matters. So therefore, we have a program that, will, that is affordable. So accredited. And we went through this a little bit on their site. So um, it is fully accredited by two bodies, by the quality assurance agencies in the UK. So it's an ACTT. So QAA is like um, ACTT in Trinidad, but it's in the UK. So they advise the governments on applications for degrees 
and awarding and awarding powers and the right to be called a university in, in UK. Right. So I want to show you guys my certificate. This is my certificate from last year, February. And if you look at it, it came directly from the University of Bedfordshire. There is no CTS college on this certificate. So it is, is an international degree. So what I must tell you that while you're doing your degree, and yes, you'll have a job market locally to look at to get a job, but eventually you could open up yourself to the international job markets. So you can see other parts in the world. If you look at it, there, when you look at Caribbean jobs, there are a lot of remote work um, openings, and it's not, it's not local. You can use a degree to get into America. Yes, they do it. They do consider it. So right now we have a uh oh that's Valmiki. Thanks, Valmiki. <laughs> so, so this is a question looking. coming from continuation. Uh, go, so, no. go ahead. Um I've never had a degree before, but how would I tell how would I show an employer the courses that I did? What I learned, the practicals I did. Do I get a transcript from the school? Yeah. So you get a transcript, you get a certificate, you get a completion letter stating your, your degree, your class, everything. Even on your resume, you can actually say it because in the program, and I'm going to show you a little later, um, it's very practical. So you can actually place the application to build on your resume. So it was a part of building an e-commerce store, um, a taxi booking service, a hotel management service. So you can actually put these things on your resume because it's, it's true the is um is actually assignments in the program so i it's it's not a problem for you to put those there so again i saw so so the transcript you get the hard copy that comes to us we scan them mm -hmm. and we can get a soft copy as well okay all right and if i um if i lose my transcript i can come back to you and get it right if you lose a transcript we can get a mm -hmm. soft copy from us but there is a we have to request it from university and i think it's about 20 pounds just to replace it with shipping and everything. And no problem. No problem. And how long will that take? Um, average a month or so because it comes from the UK and and they use um not FedEx, this next person, UPS. Yeah, yes. so it it, it kind of comes quickly, but not as quick as not not like the next day. And when it comes, you know, I come to the school to collect it, or they just send it directly. Yeah, to you me. could come to, you can actually put where you wanted to send it to. So you can send it to the school, or you can send it straight to your home address. All right. Thanks. No problem. So the program is globally accessible. So I'm going to show you guys uh, a bit on this, but I want to show, I want to let you guys know. So if there's a brio. Um, online environment. This is from the university itself. So there's an online environment that's available for all students. So you can access it anywhere in the world. Um, one thing I want to show you now is our local share drive with all our recordings, books, and materials. So where is that page? So tell me if you can see this browser um, window. Yeah. Well, I see your thumbs up. Thanks, Jesus. So uh, once you start the program, you'll be given access to this folder. And I will tell you, if you start at level four, you'll be given access to level four, level five, and level six. If you qualify and you could start at level six, you'll be still be given access to level four, level five, and level six. So if you start at level four, these are, these are your units in level four. There are only four units in level four. In fact, I must tell you each level, there are only four units. This is just a shortcut for the supporting information folder on the outside here. In level six, there are also four units, right? So I must show you as well. So if you're doing level six and you have research methodologies, Mr. Raghi Varvanar is teaching that class. You get to see your books here on the drive. You have your lecture notes from the lecturer, local lecturer. So this is classes that's going on right now. 
and you see his, his lecture notes assignment one assignment two you even have samples as well i will show you they have even access to previous semesters so in case you want to go back into the previous semesters and see how the sound of the assignment looked this this guided learning folder is everything from the university so you can see week one to week uh, 11 here. So one of your, one of your um, potential students worried. So I don't know if you can answer this question. Have you ever worked in America using your degree? If I ever worked in America? Yeah. No. You know anybody from the school who ever worked in America? I know a guy. He is, his name is Oral Mohan. He's in, Amer he's in Canada right now. He, mm -hmm. he worked in Florida in the SpaceX program for Tesla, well, Elon Musk. I mm -hmm. think he switched across to Checkpoint, which is a firewall based um, uh, company now, but that is based um, in America as well. And, and what issues did he meet in terms of this degree? Did they reject it or did they take it? No, they take it. So he changed jobs with a degree and they took it. I saw his um, criteria change. I don't know if I could find it on, um, on LinkedIn though, let me just do a quick search for you. Actually, my mm -hmm. LinkedIn, my LinkedIn got hacked the day, so I can't use my account. Or uh... yeah. <laughs> start all over. I need to start all over. Instructors tell me how to do. So, I hope that was jazz. Oh. Anybody so else this is, to know? This is this is Oral. This is Oral Mohan. This is. He recently finished his degree with us. If you look at his degree, University of Bedfordshire, he just has mm. finished, right? Um, he's actually in Checkpoint. After he got his degree, he just applied to Checkpoint and he got through to Checkpoint. He was actually at SpaceX program before in the States. But right now he's at Checkpoint for the past three months. Mm. And through this degree, he got his job at um as a security architecture at Checkpoints Software Technologies Limited in the US. Right. Shouldn't be any worries then. No, it's no worries at all. Because the highest standard in education is from the UK. The English education system is one of the highest in the world. So anything that comes from the UK, any anywhere in the world will will um accept it and recognize it. He's a really good friend of mine too, so that's awesome. Good to know people. So, okay, so back to our um slides here, our presentation. So the guided learning is everything that comes from university. So sometimes when you start a program, you may be delayed to get access to the Brio portal. So what we do, we download everything so you guys can have access to it. In the recordings, all the classes are recorded. So these are the recordings from this semester. I don't know if any will play though. Let me see who will play. I know it's take a little while to load and play. So you can see some classes like an hour and 20 minutes long. It's all according to how much to be done in the class, right? And what 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 is the cool thing is that even if you start a new semester, like in September, and you don't you want to look ahead. So you could actually go to the previous semesters because the learning outcomes mightn't change as much but you have access to the previous semesters and the classes as well. So you can see the same contextual report, class one, class two, class three. All right. It wouldn't play, it would take too long to play. In terms of the software engineering, how does the assignments work? So there are different, in each, each level, there are different assignments. I, I do cover that in a little detail later, so I'll cover it um later down the road. All right. So I want to show you guys that we do take samples from um persons who did really well in the past. So when you start, a, I understand as a student when you start, uh, uh, like a degree like this, and you look at the requirements for your uh assignment and you're like, I'm lost, I don't know what to do. So what we did, we actually took a, um, samples of person's work who did really well. So you can actually get an idea what the university looks for. So this is my um, assignment here. I actually got 95. 
So you can actually see like, okay, this is what they're looking for in, for the introduction. This is like the aim of the project. So you could get to actually see, it's not a matter of copy and pasting, but it's a matter of just learning and just to steer you in the correct direction. So sometimes it mightn't be as confident while you write. It's just, just to look in here and see, okay, cool, I'm in the right part, right? So this took me a little while and I was very lost and confused, but at the end, I got a pretty good mark. So, so you, we have other so people you, as well. You then get you then get examples. Are you giving us examples for when we yeah, I, I got examples. So when I was doing it, I was looking at mm -hmm. I think this no, I remember this guy, not this guy. I remember the name because it was coming up over and over. Was it? I think it was this guy. And everybody has their 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 this their, their it's it's unique to everyone. So, yes, I kind of follow some of the tables and stuff with like the, the layout and stuff, but I didn't use his diagram. I didn't use some of his um like personalization. I didn't use that. But what I did, I just read on how to outline it. So it's just a, it's, it's a matter of just saying um the intro, the history of it, the positives of it, the negatives of it, and your recommendation based on what you just written. So it's just mostly like about a layout. So on the um report itself so i didn't use pers persuasion but i get it i just get an idea of what to write and just how to format my documents so all this is available for you so even when you're looking ahead to the next semester so like between two semesters you can actually go in and look at what the assignments look like just to prepare yourself right So level six. So this is our share drive that you will get access to. And um, we also have some supporting information for you guys. So you just know like how to access the email, how to submit, even download Office when you start with us, code of conduct, even how to do have a reference in, um, how to access extension in your assignments, your mitigation, and a whole lot more, right? Any questions on this so far, guys? So as before we continue, I want to show you guys one last thing. So this is the Brio page that you will have access to. This is the University of um, Bedfordshire Resources for on uh, Education Online. So this is what you begin about given access to. My um my view might be a little different, but it will be along the same line. So you have your units. It might look something like this, and you have your units here. And from here now, so like if you're doing information tech, uh, advanced information technology, I'm going to view. Well, I'm going to view as a student, so you could see it, right? When you are ready to submit your assignments, you can actually submit your assignment here. And it basically a, um, a matter of just opening links. So you have a, um, instruction to your, for your assignment. Um, even like your study program, if you look at it week one, week two, week three, the same exact information that we have on our drive. So, so to submit your assignment, you're submitting straight to university. So we will guide you on your assignment. We will do tutorials. We will even review your assignment, but you're submitting your assignment to the university. My assignment is overdue, so I can submit right now. But at the same time, you'll see a mark everything right here. Actually, let me do it on my account. But I'm still a student. So I'll show you guys 200. So this is my account. I'm actually doing um, another. Oh, oh, no, not that. This. So I'll show you guys some feedback and stuff as well, right? So this is my units I'm in right now, right? So this is one of the units I just finished. So I'll show you guys how it play out as a student. So this is where you'll get to submit your assignments. And when you finish submit your assignments, you'll get to see a mark here as well. So you see, I can see my mark here. So I can actually launch my assignments and see the feedback from the university as well. 
it takes a little while. But I just want you guys to show you um, we host, we provide the, the lecture and everything for the for the program. Oh, let's see, where is this thing? I'll take this off. So I'm guessing there, there will be deadlines for the assignments. Yeah. But if we finish so, sooner, will you, you look it over? If we finish sooner, we, you can send it for us. We could look it over, fine tune. You can even upload mm. it. See a similarity score. So, like, there's a part we could see a similarity score because uh, they do detect if you have too much information that's copied from websites and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can even resubmit, refine, so you can actually see where in your report you have stuff that's kind of highlighted as look like foot, foot from somebody else. And you can make changes. And then when you submit, it will be marked. You could see a mark and then you could see a feedback from the university right. as well. All right, for anybody who's going to do software engineering, let's make a, a study group, okay? <laughs> okay, so we do have everyone in group. So level four have their own group. Level five have their own group. So I don't think people will mind if I show the groups. I even will show the software engineering group. So this is a software engineering group, right? You could see um, we remind students of our classes and it's very interactive. We have persons asking questions about the homework. So students helping students as well. So as all the students, we have a level of um, the soft certificate program. We have level four, level five, and level six. So when someone is lost, so like this person posted some part of the recording to help some persons out. So it it even though it's online, we it it's still interactive. Students still helping out each other, and this is the this is the most I ever see a group so much in a chat so far. And I believe once you guys start because of how interactive you guys are, it will continue the same way. So this is just about Brio. This will this will be um this is where you have access to your information. You'll be submitting assignments here. You even given um some videos from university as well. So you like you have videos to look over from university. They'll just give you some ideas on what to look at. They'll take too long to load. So so this is Brio, and you'll be given access to all the units by each level, each semester as you go on. Any questions, guys? You'll be tested. Yes, you'll be tested on what you learn during the course. So the university provides us with the learn outcomes. We teach the learn outcomes. We help you prepare the assignment, the report, the presentation, the PowerPoint, the application, every single thing. Once you submit to the university, they will remark it. So I'm just going to give you one example of the thing is here. So on the assignment feedback, what they have two assignments, right? And what we do, we download the, um, the brief from the university. So this is actually, this actually came from university. So there is a guide that they provide for students that comes from the university. And then there is a brief that comes from university as well. So you can see like the deadline, what you're supposed to put, um, instruction for students, is a taxi booking service. So consider this following scenario where you need to do any use case diagrams. So they're very detailed. So what happens if you fail? Okay. So if you have if you happen to then pass a unit, um, so there are two assignments, right? One will be worth 30%, one will be worth 70%. And the cool thing is if you didn't pass one, you'll be given a chance to rewrite the assignment. In the next semester, it's so you're talking about software engineer. Um, software engineering is a bit more flexible. We could actually mm -hmm. help you guys. Um, in the software engineering part, um, if you didn't do well, we just allow you to do it over. Because that's more on our side. We have more control. So even if nice. you didn't get a chance to to do assignment well, we just actually just to um do some um fine tuning and resubmit, and we would just mark it over. So but trying to get you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
No also, cost to, be added how... to, to repeat the, the assignment, Maya. Okay. I, I want to know, um, again, $3,000 from MIC, okay? So, so how are you going to pay off this $3,500? Like, what so, was the plan? So, the costing for the software engineering is $3,500. All you can pay mm. half the start and half when it finishes. That two months and a half long. But we could work out something as well afterwards, if you like, um, Jesus, just to accommodate um, mm -hmm. your, your situation. All right, sir. <laughs> no props. So that was about Brio and our share drive. And hope you guys enjoyed that part. So as I said, the, the BSC is very practical. So you're looking at um real world solution um problem solving so looking at um problems right here in Trinidad if you like so I must say level four and level five they give you problems to solve but level six they ask you to look around and see what problems it have and how technology could solve it right so what I did when I was in the program I look at PTSE I look at how a fleet management system with Internet of Things could help PTSE be more efficient with their maintenance of the buses and stuff. What was cool when doing research, and you learn so much by doing research, is that they actually have AI cameras. So you can actually see if the driver's on the phone, if he's dropping asleep. Even the technology could sense when he's hard accelerating or hard braking, which do affect the maintenance or the, 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 it does affect the maintenance and longevity of the bus. So it makes you, look at solution well problems right or turn out here and how technology could solve the problem the program is accelerated so as i said before there are three levels each level there are four units and each unit could be done in two the four units could be done in two semesters so you'll be doing two units per semester which are four months long and the total length of the degree is just over two years it's two years eight months actually when you start at level four it is very affordable. As you can see later, we do have payment plans and stuff that can help you um, pay for your investment in your future. And we do have a partnership with JMMB to help students by offering a student loan, All right? So how the program is structured, and I've been saying level four, level five, level six, over and over. So. We do have three levels in the BSC IT, level four, level five, level six, which is equivalent to a year one in a university, year two for level five and year three in level six. So these are the qualifications. And ideally for level four is CAPE or persons with two or more years IT work experience or IT certifications, or they have three years or more general work experience with CSEC. But as I said before, we could do, you could do this certificate in software engineering program which will be ideal for persons who have CSEC or even persons with general work experience and they could enter the degree. And it also gives you a really good foundation. Huh? So level five, you either have a level four IT diploma or two or more years in IT experience, working experience and IT certs. And then level six, anyone who has an associate's degree or HND with a higher national diploma or any level five IT diploma, or even like six years or more IT work experience with certs, you can get into level six. The NESC diploma places you in level six, but I must say that the final approval comes from University of Bedfordshire. So based on history, historical data, that NESC diploma places you in level six. All right, to answer your question. So I just wanna go through the structure of the program a bit, right? So in level four, there are two semesters. Level semester one, which are four months long, which is four months long, and semester two, which is four months long as well. In total, you'll be studying level four for eight months. Level five is the same exact thing, two semesters, right? Four months long, that is also eight months. In eight months, you'll be completing level five. Level six is the same exact thing eight months as well, two semesters, four months long. However, the university recently introduced semester breaks in between each level. 
So there's a semester break at level between level four and five and a semester break between level five and six, which are four months long as well. So in all, you'll be doing 24 months, which is really two years of study. And you have an eight month break period between, well, eight months in um, of break in total, right? So what happens if you start at level five? So level five, you have the same two semesters, which eight months, and then level six, the same two semesters, but then you only have one semester break, which four months. So you have 16 months of study and just four months break, right? And what happens if you start at level six? You can actually finish your degree in eight months once you have the qualification, right? We have no break. So people are probably wondering, what can I do during the breaks? So we have a wide range of certifications, IT certifications and even personal development. And we offer you guys a 40% discount during the semester break, but you must be a, a, a BSc IT student on semester break to get this for um discount, right? So there, there's no way for me to continue the next units during the break. You can do your self study, but the university would not enroll you to those units. If I do the self study and then I decide to take the um the exam or whatever assignments they have, it, do I still have to go through the four the four months when they start? Once up? if um yeah, because there are, there are dates that are stipulated by the university, and they they will only mark those papers after. So you could do your self study and submit everything early in the semester, but you still have mm -hmm. to wait for them to serve, go through the marking, go through an exam board, then to give you the marks and to say a pass. And stuff wait, like does that. that mean you'll have the assignments prior so you can give me a during the break to do and then look it over? Remember, you have access to the whole level, the whole of um the Google Drive, and those assignments, it changes, but it doesn't really change by much. So you okay. can get an idea so, of what you're doing. Like I basically started during the break, and then hopefully yeah, best we, hope they don't change it have, too much. Yeah, we have students who just look at the recordings and stuff, or, and and went through the 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 uh information and then they send us their assignments we review it and we find it's fine but the only holdback for them is that they have to submit when the university enroll them to their units and then get marks and stuff like that from there well, i guess um you could hold on to it if i finish it sooner and then you could tell me if there's something i need to change or add Def definitely yeah that's that's fine All and right. we we appreciate persons who are being proactive like that because it, it shows how passionate you are for, your, for yourself and your studies in IT. Let's see, four months is too long for me to sit and do not. <laughs> I understand why we we ask the university to um at least let persons enroll, but they they kind of um that's kind of the policy now, unfortunately. So that's why we offer the short courses for you guys. And it's like okay, for we there are some project management, there are some web design stuff in the program. So if once you do these little short courses, it, it does help you in the program itself to do your assignments. So what would I learn? So in level four, um, level four provides you with the skill to study specialist um, technology topics that are later covered in the course, right? These include introduction to software, explore the principle of hardware, how computers are built, how computers work, the databases you have access to Cisco Academy, where you'll be doing CCNA with Cisco, introduction to SQL, which is databases, software application, hardware installation, configuration, maintenance. You'll work with um, Oracle, Java, and Python. So you'll be learning Python and Java programming languages, as well as Oracle databases. In level five, um, you'll focus on how software is designed and developed on, to work on different devices. So for instance, if you open uh, a website with your phone, it looks different to how you open it on your um, laptop. So that's how you'll be learning how to design software and even web applications to be viewed on different devices. So one of the units in level five is kind of, you are allowed to map out your career path. 
So you look at the future trends of the industry and you could actually map out um, your career path. There's also in the um, user experience design, you learn about psych color psychology. Because when you look at some products, like red, I believe, makes you feel hungry. And KFC boxes are red. So they use that color psychology to kind of entice or persuade um, us to buy their products. And level six is where you uh, is more independent learning, but you develop work and presentation skills. Because when you go to the real work, you have to need to present your ideas on your research to your boss or a board. And this program will help you not just do the research and write up, but it helps you present um, your solution to persons like employers and help them buy into the idea. So does it cover hacking? It doesn't cover hacking as much, Maya, but there are some security measures that it does, um, especially for your final project, you do cover some security measures for your application. Um, so it would not be easily hacked, like hashing your password. So when it's stored in the database, it looks like random characters instead of the actual password and stuff like that. And I'm wondering who am I trying to hack? Maybe an expert <laughs> or something. So I just want to show you guys some of our past students' projects. So this is a, a digital wallet. This is more on the prototyping side. So this is where he kind of creates the design of the application. So this is someone's, um, how they would look if they log into the application. Um, so you see like the user, the colors, it looks really well with the red and black and even some of the highlighted stuff through all the, like the today's date, um, type the message, the little red below, even the team on the side, the apps, it looked really, really well laid out. And even when you look at your phone, because remember I said before, you need to consider all devices when you're doing designing and doing your applications. So this is how it looks on his phone as well, on a, a, a mobile application. This is someone's final report. He did a e-commerce store for, um, what is this? Uh, art stuff, like colors and crayons and paints and stuff like that. So this is actually coded. So he designed and stuff before, then he actually did the coding in the background, HTML code and CSS. Uh, and then he used PHP to interact with the database. So this is someone cut. And the cool thing is when you check out here, you can actually see your information on stripe.com. Could we implement stripe.com um, testing environment? So you can actually see a real world um, online payment portal and working with your application. He is even introduced a chat box to help persons or guide persons when they're doing their shopping online. And then, well, he implemented an admin page for persons to change their names and email or their phone number, and even include an image for his application for their profile. Do you get the rights to your project? So your project is your own. So it will be on your laptop or your computer, and you can actually use that after. You can even develop it even further after and carry it to a company. So mine was a e-pharmacy, and I implemented some same kind of idea with products and stuff like that. So I could actually take that to the, pharm the pharmaceutical sector in Trinidad and try to develop even further after that. So... How can the BSC in IT fit into your life? Because all of us, some of us working, some of us have stuff to do, and uh, it may not be possible to have it in certain times. So first of all, we have two intakes, uh, one in February and one in October. But classes actually start in September and January, I must say. Um, the unit delivery, which unit was subject delivery. So you have two hours, uh, two hour session per week. So if you're doing two units, you have two classes, which are two hours long, right? So the assessments for the units are typically two to three assessments, mostly two. Um, we, the semester lasts for 12 weeks and you get a two week break between each semester. So between uh, semester one and semester two and level four, you get a two week break in between. So this is a timetable of the uh, 
the units in the semester, but it's a little, um, how to say, congested. So I want to show you guys a different um, layout, right? So this is the sample timetable for September for level four. So you have one class on Saturday and two classes during the week. Even though you're doing two units, the computer system structure classes, there are two um, learning outcomes in that unit. So one is the database aspect, and the next one is the Cisco Academy aspect, which is networking. So we decided to just split the classes in two just to give guys a better chance in learning everything in those two um, programs. And then you have um, principal programming on Tuesdays. So in level five, there are two classes. Oh, I must tell you the classes during the week is from six to eight. Sometimes they are from half six to half eight, but you, when you get a timetable, you will see those little changes. So on Saturdays, there are two classes on Saturdays alone for level five. It's from 10 to 12, and then from one to three, right? <clears throat> then in level six, um, we have two sets of students. We have students who are not entering level six. So their classes will be on Saturdays, which are uh, eight to 10, and then, well, half 10 to half 12. Then the person who in the last semester will be from on Mondays and Wednesdays. But the programming classes on Wednesdays, we ask all students who are in level six, who are new to level six to start that class, because that's where you're actually building the application that I showed you before, the e-commerce application. And once you can build that in the first semester, you will just implement changes and, and make more tweaks in the second semester. So that's on our timetable. So what support we have available from University of Bedfordshire? So there are some support uh, like course advisors who can help with um, application and more information about the courses. The academic as well, you have induction and one-on-one -on -one support. You have administrative, which are like letters. Um, you'll be given a, a offer letter, even completion letter, and even general inquiries from students. <clears throat> The online support, which is true, Brio, you have all your learning materials, your feedback, your grades, some of assignments. We all went through this a little, uh, a little bit back there. And even we have access to online library, which will be going through some journals, readings, and papers, and some other complementary resources. So what support is at CTS College? So this is the support that we have at CTS College. So we have some key points. Um, students come to us for advice. I even I almost every day persons call just to get some advice on the units or even how to move forward or even to like to get mitigation. They 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 they, they feel like they lost a bit. And we kind of guide them through. Seeing that I was a past student of the of the course of the program, I have that insight as a student and as well as what the university looks for. So we give students advice based on our experience. We provide information to do like as well the, the mitigation to get extension, um, accessing emails for their university, even resetting the passwords for their Brio and these other stuff for the university um, portal. Um, we also help the analysis where we do assignment review, we provide feedback, we do extra tutorials, we help students even help them submit their assignments. We, pro we provide guidance on how to submit the assignment, even though us, we even do Zoom session with students on how to do um, referencing, troubleshoot the code for the application, even how to use Google Scholar, how to cite correctly. Our team have first-hand experience with the program, so we are very, um, we have a, a very high level of competence. And we even try to fill in the gaps because we know as a student, I was feeling lost. So I understand totally how it feels when you're a student. I want to fill in those gaps as much as possible. And we are very solution oriented. We don't just look at um, your, your problem alone on Amplify. We look at a way better, uh, a better way forward for you guys. And we give students direction and suggestion on their career paths. So even sometimes in the, even in the personal life. So in all, we 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 have we doesn't really so provide support. Go ahead. We keep saying we, but who else is involved? So, my colleague Kwame Ki is also a mm -hmm. part of the team. 
So there's actually yeah. two persons in the team. Yeah, he's in it. He's in, he's here. He's in the chat as well. And um, what is his role? He's the program administrator. I'm the program manager. He's the program administrator. But ideally, we we mirror each other. We do the exact same thing. Okay, and how many different instructors will we have? Well, I I particularly looking at the software engineering right now because I can't even move on to the degree. Yet. So, so how Vamiki much? I must say, Vamaki is the program manager for the software engineering. Look, look, he just, he just say a uh, little message in the group there in the chat. So in the software engineering, there's one, two, there are four lecturers in the software engineering um, program. Okay, and are they usually available? Yeah, uh, and they are in the field of um, what they teach as well. So Marcus Alexander doing the web design. He's actually uh, a web a web developer. Um, Marcus Woods is a database administrator. So he's doing the, 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 the database. And the other other guys are also in their field as well. Um, is there I have a possibility. Question. What's that? Yes. Um. Do you all offer a facility where we can come into the school to get hands-on assistance it, for we, these two quarters? There is the, the as well according to the availability of the lecturer, but we did have instances where students come to the school to get that hand-holding for their assignments, yeah. Okay, thanks. No problem. I must point out, guys, that we have a, a Instagram page, so you can follow us at BSC underscore IT underscore CTS College. Uh, feel free to follow us. I want to show you guys some of our testimonials from students. So this is Mr. Damian Breaker. Um, CTS College played a crucial role in helping me attain my undergraduate degree with the University of Edfish. I was initially apprehensive since it's been years since I've obtained my associate's degree. However, my the lecturers and staff at CTS College were extremely helpful and accommodating through all my time with them. They provided me with an abundance of support and guidance, which made the learning process easier and more affordable, enjoyable. Having completed my course with first class honors, I can confidently say that it was one of the best decisions of my life. And I really appreciate um, his feedback. So I'm not gonna read all of those so you have access to these afterwards, but I just wanna show you guys some of our students and how much they what, what they talk, what they say about us and the support that we offer for them. So when you start the program, you'll be there will be an induction session that will help you um get up to speed with some of the expectations. So you'll be introduced to the course, you'll be doing some, you'll be doing some reference and guidance. Because when you're doing your assignments, you have to use references. You'll gain some tips and skills for studying to succeed. And we also do provide academic writing workshops because it's a different writing style when you start this degree or any any degree actually. So we help students um, with that um, workshop. How will be assessed? So there are some, there are many ways you'll be assessed. You'll be accessed through coursework. You there are some groups and individual projects. You'll be assessed through portfolios as, as essays, presentation, and exams. So the exams in the BSc, however, are multiple choice, and we do provide like Google a Google form. We could do the test over and over and over and over until you're happy, and then you can move on to the week the test on Brio from university. And remember, we provide constant feedback and advice from us, the BSC IT team, and from your lecturer as well. So passing units, the pass mark is an aggregated mark of 40%. And to pass the unit, you must attempt all assessments. So they must pass the two assignments. Yes, the assignments are online as well. Thanks for asking. So the assessments, there are initially two assessments, but there are some cases where there'll be three, right? 
And to progress to each level, you must pass at least three units with a forty percent or more. You ready to link up? No, I ready to link up yet. Loving the cooking, the Right. Sorry about that, guys. So, if you attain a mark of thirty-five or more, you the university do give you a uh, a pass as well to um to get the to credit to pass on to the next unit, the next level. Right. Any questions about the pass grade? Anything here, guys? Good, Silva. So I just want to show you guys the classification. This is uh yeah, it, it is multiple choice, yes. So you are once you enroll to the degree, you'll be doing an honors degree. And there are different classifications for honors degree. So if your overall average is 70% or more, it's a first class degree. From 60 to 69 percent is an upper second. From 50 to 59 is a lower second, and from 40 to 49 is a third class honor. And I'm going to show you in January this year, we had 43 students at first class. All the students got their first class when they graduated. And in the May semester, when they graduated in May, this we finished in May, we had 31 students with first class and one student upper class, second. So what do we need to do this program? So you could either visit us, because we have Wi-Fi at our school, but with how COVID happened and we are more online, we do have that Google shared space for all the information as well. Um, student must have access to their uh, Wi-Fi, um, internet connection, or even wired, or on a laptop. So. This is general information about the program. They're not going to learn anything today unless you want me or you want me to give you a test at the end. That's fine. Thanks for asking. So where would you graduate when you finish the program? So actually, there are two places you can actually graduate, right? You can actually graduate right here at CTS College. We have graduation every year um, at the Hyatt in December. Uh, or you can actually go to the University of Bedfordshire and graduate. But students get emails to say they, they got inv invitations to come across the university to graduate. So I just want to say you'll be students of two institutions, the University of Bedfordshire and CTS College. And you do have option the option to graduate in the UK, or you can stay right here in Trinidad and graduate with, with your friends and family. How do you qualify? Well, we went through this a bit before, but I just want to go a little further in detail. So if you have two years of work more experience in IT, you have if you have K passes, any tertiary qualifications from before, IT certifications, CSEC with two years or more working experience. And how you provide the evidence is by a job letter for work experience, academic certificates, IT certificates, copy of your ID or passport, and a copy of your resume, right? For level five. And how do I start the software engineering? Do I need any proof? You don't need any. Um, there's no uh, qualifications really to start that program. You can start it. When does this semester start for that? Um, we have a, a cycle starting in September. The date's a little lower down, right? So you'll see it in a bit. Can you go back to level five? No problem. Level four. Remember, I, I'll be sending this to you as well. Oh, to get screenshot, yeah, no problem. SS is screenshot. Okay, cool. So level five, if you have a level four diploma, polycution IT, if you have K pass, K passes or two years or more IT work experience, a combination of IT work experience or an academic and or professional qualification. So it's the same information before we need for evidence, right? You want to screenshot of this one as well, or you got true? Awesome. And level six, if you possess any of these, uh, level five diploma in IT uh, or HND, which is higher national diploma, or you must use this degree. And you have a combination of IT work experience for more, four or more years, and you have academic or professional qualification. 
I guess and you took a screenshot as well already. So how do I apply? So you could complete the application form, which I would send to you guys in email and submit your uh, resume, your CV and your ID. Um, submit a letter from the employer confirming the job title and duration of employment. I should clearly state the position and submit your transcript and certificate. And also submit any copy of any IT cert that you have already. So if I have finished school and had to leave at the end of form for let the guys come in. You can start a software engineering course here that don't have any um oh thank you, Valmiki. <laughs> so I just want to go through this quickly with you guys, the application process. So you submit your application to us via the form. You send we send it to the university once we compile on information and it's um income um it's ready to submit. Then from there, you get a feedback from university on your acceptance. From here now, you actually sign the letter and return it to us. Then you make a payment towards your fees, either in full or via the payment plan, which I'll put you a little after. And then you start your classes on September the 16th. And we add it to WhatsApp groups and other information as well, right? So how much will it cost? So this is the costing for the degree for each level. There are four units in each level. And each semester is 500 um, TT for registration. The units is 2,000 per unit, which is 8,000. And the university fees is 600 for level four, 600 pounds. But you don't have to pay all this up in front, right? We do have a payment plan, but I must say the approximate cost for the entire program is around 56, 55,000. Because of the pounds payment, the total figure fluctuates. But remember, in our figure before, we, we would make 54,000 more versus a, a CSEC salary with a degree. So in one year, you can actually pay off for your degree. Your return on investment uh, is met in one year. So we do have payment plans available, and this is our payment plan. So if you guys want to take some screenshots, that's fine. So every month you put in, you'll be paying for your degree. Um, so at the start of the semester, you pay the registration. Um, the tuition for this degree for level four is four thousand. So you're paying a thousand every month towards tuition, and the university fee is three hundred pounds. But I split it up to one fifty pounds when you start. Um, the start of the semester and, and the second month is another 150 pounds. So once you pass the first two months, which is the first month is the most payment to be put in out, the second month is a thousand TT and 150 pounds. After that is just 1,000 per month for two months, which is the third and fourth month. And it's the repeat of the same exact thing for the second semester in level four. The program is not get approved yet Stop covering um, international programs back in 2017 when the oil prices um, kind of dropped too low to support the educational sector with Gates. So all they do right now, they cover the local programs, um, to program some UE, UTT, Custard, who have their own programs, they would cover those programs instead. They would not cover the international programs, especially like this one that came from the University of Bedfordshire in UK. Level five is the same exact thing, but just mind that the tuition goes up a bit. So you're paying one, I'm um, 11.25 instead per month instead of 1,000. It's the same exact cost for the university fees and 500 um, TT for registration. Then level six, um, the tuition goes up a bit again. Registration is the same. You're paying 12.50 for tuition. But I must say the university fees goes up a substantial amount. So it's 375 for the first month and 375 for the second month. And these that are in pounds. And then from there, all you're paying is 1250 per month. And then it's repeated the same um payments in the second semester. So 
we do have a special offer for you guys. So you can get a thousand off each level, which means you get $250 off tuition per unit. Remember, there are four units in each level. So in all, it's 250 by four, which is $1,000. However, you have special conditions apply, right? So to get the offer, you must submit your application form with supporting documents by Friday 11th of June. Oh, that should be August. <laughs> Let me change that one time. To bsc at ctscollege.com. So this will go to our group email. <clears throat> so this is separate from the um, software engineering, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so I'll get info on that after. Yeah, it's right after. So um, thank you for your patience, bro. <laughs> So once you give us your application by the 11th of August, you can send it to us to CTS and BSC at ctscollege.com. And you must pay your tuition and university fees in full by the 16th of September, which is when classes start, right? So I'll just stay on this page for a bit in case anyone wants to take a screenshot again. So when do you start the degree? As I mentioned before, the 16th of September is when the classes start. And for you, Mr. Jesus, this is your section here now. So I don't think I meet the requirements as yet, right? I think you're not ready for it as well. So we do have the certificate in software engineering that can help you qualify and even assess that if you think you're ready to commit to the degree, and as well give you a very good foundation on IT learning outcomes for the degree. So this program is for persons who, it's persons who are either out of secondary school who are seeking to pursue a qualification in IT or persons who just completed a CSEC qualification and may not achieve the, the qualifying standards to enroll to a BSc IT program in a university. So the program is made up of five courses, which it give you give each student an introductory level of areas within the IT field, right? So each course runs for four weeks. So it's 12 contacts. You have three hours classes uh, a week, two three hour classes per week. The courses are practical. So every week you'll be given assessments to solve real life problems. Each course is directly linked with the units in the, in the IT degree. So the database design unit is directly linked to the computer system structure unit, which is, has databases in it. Do you have a timetable for September? Yeah, it's coming up right after, right? So completing each unit, the student will receive right. a certificate for each unit they have completed. So you'll be given five units, five certificates for each, well, well for, this, for the five units that they complete, right? So these are the units. And I'm not going to read through all. I'm going to give you these, and you could read through these. So units are introduction to Java programming, introduction to Python programming, networking fundamentals, introduction to web design, and database design fundamentals. Any questions? I'll pause here. You have any questions about any of the units here? None. I'm good there, good there. Hi. This is uh commentary Ken good day, everybody. Uh, Hi, just man. wanted to ask about te a technology, a technology manager. That is basically my aspiration. Um mm -hmm. I want to know if this course would be aligning me towards that goal. So you, you do learn about the technology, you do learn about IT, you do learn about programming, design, but in level six, however, is where you're doing some aspect of project management. And even you'll be learning how to be like an IT consultant because you look 
the same scenario that I show you with PTSC is that you looking for these programs and as a, as an IT manager as well, yes, to be managing people and stuff, but you're looking, you'll be looking for ways to how, how to improve the processes and how to improve um the company's um I guess IT oh, infrastructure as well. Yeah, performance, you're correct. So so it's kinda you're you're gonna be gaining more ana analytical um skills then. Yes. Um, so in level in level six, you'll be looking at the solution and you'll be doing your research and then you'll be presenting um your research and the finance return on investment, how it will cost um the benefits. Within five years, we're making this amount of money if you implement this. So it, it gives you that um skill. So when you become an IT manager now, because remember you, you will be, be you will be reporting to directors and the board and these other stuff. And it gives yeah. you that that foundation, that skill, that confidence to go and um be before those guys. It it is intimidating looking at from this level, but yeah. But, with the practice that you'll be gaining through this program, it will help you a, a lot. Thanks for raising. I right. better thanks. No problem. Could you touch on the database design a little? So the, the, the database design, um, you'll be learning about SQL, which is the language for databases. The, there's something called entity relation diagrams and data normalization. So they are like best, best practices while designing databases because when you're doing databases there are different um entities that we're doing and it kind of gives you the best practice so you don't want to over complicate a database because it would it will slow down your, your application for instance if you go to log into amazon and amazon database is not designed um correctly by you just logging in it will take a substantial amount of time before you can actually access your accounts, even to pull up, up um, your products on your page and these other aspects. Those are databases in the background. So these need to be designed in such a way that the customer or the experience of the customer, the user, would not be affected. So you'll be learning how to develop from ground up a well-structured and a well-designed database. So when you actually do pair it with the application, it would not pull back or would not slow down the application. They're trying to make something that's practical depending on your situation. Yes. Your demand. Um in terms of these units, do I have to go with the class in terms of how fast I finish it? Like I I work with the class and I hand it in, or do I move from one to the other? Um you could do your self-study because at the same thing with the degree. So let's pull this up quickly for you. The same thing with the degree. Once you start, you'll be given access to all the units, right? I'll be I'll be given access to the assessments too. Yeah. So this is the folder for the software um certificate in software engineering. It laid out the same way. So when you move from one program to the next, it doesn't the, the, the formatting, the layout doesn't change as much. So you'll be more at home, right? And so instance the fundamental net or oh, not only fundamental database design fundamentals. So you have access to the lecture notes from CTS College, and you have access to previous cycles of the program. So if you want to go back to this year, uh, uh, February, you can see all the information here. So you let your notes. So it really goes from the ground up. What is a database? Database management system. Um, show you where the database lies within when like applications and how users use it. So it, it really gives you that really broad foundation first. When we start in September, will there be anybody further ahead than me or, or is everybody no. starting from the same place? Everybody starts from the same place. And right. also, just like the degree, this also has recordings. I wish my stuff could move a little faster. So we also have recordings and there are previous recordings. 
let's take one, yeah, January, well, February this year. And you have to report. And so there are four sessions in each in each program, each unit, there are only four sessions and they are three hours long. So even before you have access to all the recordings, and they don't change that much, right? So this one is about two hours. Again, it just take a little while to load on the browser, so I wouldn't really play it, right? But yeah, you have access to everything and you will have access to other units as well, if it would come up, right? All right. Cool. So the times for classes for this certificate in software engineering, um, the next classes for the uh, program is gonna start in the 5th of September. Uh, also, so you have two classes, right? Ideally, we try to have two classes per week. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, you have two units, and that will end on the 26th of September, the 27th. Then these two units will start in October and will end along the same time. So Thursday, Fridays, now you have these two units, and then you have one unit remaining in October. So there will be a time you will have three classes for the week, but these two classes will finish and will just remain with one class as well. So if you look from the 5th of September to the 8th of November, it's about two months and a half, right? So this is the entirety of the program here. I will send this to you guys. So you, you guys can have a copy of it, right? This is the payments. So as I said before, individually, there are, there are thousand each. So individual, of course, if you do one now, one later, one next year, there are 5,000, but if you enroll to all of five of them, you can get a substantial discount of 1,500. So the total bundle is 3,500, right? So payment plans are available. You could either pay all up in front, which are the first option, or you could pay half the start, which is 1,750. Then when you reach at the second month, so say in September, you start, you pay 1,750. At the start of October, you can pay eight seventy five, which will make you to the court three quarter mark, and then at the end of this of the program, you pay the next three seventy five um eight seventy five, which will be a hundred percent paid for the program, right? How do you apply? We have a registration form. Um, I could send for you guys. I completed to send it back to BSC at CTS College. I will send this email to everyone in the call because I send this email out to everyone during this week, right? And I know we had a lot of questions and stuff before, but I'm open to any more questions you guys have. Do you help in identifying products and projects? So is this for the degree itself? So I must tell you from level four and five, they give you stuff to do. Level six is where you look for the items or these problems. So yeah, we do guide you in the, however, in the final project with our e-commerce store, we encourage everyone to do an e-commerce application because we have a substantial amount of support for that. But for any other like projects, so like, the project management, you want to look for a company or a issue. We, we, the lecturer do provide support in identifying the company and stuff like that. So we did the uh, health information system. Uh, we looked at um, Ministry, of Edu um, Ministry of Health. ICT's um, information communication. I see that line publication. Uh, for the software in, in certificate, certificate in software engineering. Yes, sir. Um. Well, ideally, classes start on the on the fifth of September, but we do we do take late applications or late registrations. That's fine. So I would say safely the first of September if you want to put a deadline to it. But you can send it now. That's not a problem. You can send it now. You can send it tomorrow. You can send it Monday. That's fine. I want to make sure I could pay it before I even send it. No problem. So ICT is actually information and communication technology. It's a broader term for IT. 
and it refers to all communication technologies, including internet, wireless, networks, cell phone, computer, software, middleware, video conferencing, social networking, and other media. So what is the question? What about ICT? So there are some instances of ICT with the network inside of it, but it doesn't go too much deep full-fledged in the communication aspect, as in with cell phones and um, software, video conferencing, social media. So it's not in-depth like that. The most intercommunication is that networking aspect. If you do a Udemy course online, most persons I saw you um, that you Udemy course, they actually got into level four. And they did like about six or seven of those. You can apply for February, that's fine. And still receive discount. So once you submit to early your application and you pay early, you get a discount. Um, you could actually apply now, get your acceptance and start in February. That's another option that you have, right? There is that are for the software engineering tool, or is that just for the degree? The, okay, the degree is a bit more complex where you had to send your application to university, get accepted, get feedback. But the software engineering, you can send your information to us, and there's no re prior requirements to start. So there's no requirements, mm -hmm. there's no qualification. You could be straight out of CSEC, not get results yet, and you could still start. So if I so I could start in February and I'll still get a discount of thirty five hundred. Yeah, once you enroll to all five. Yeah. All right. So the discount, once you enroll to all five units, you get a discount, no matter where when you start, right? Did the era, um hey. with reference to the online banking, uh, going through setting up the account, but the account acts in for seventeen numbers. And based on what you all have in the guide, yeah, it only has what oh, it is. I don't put it it's missing a few digits, like seven digits. Which which bank account is that? Which um from which bank? One from Scotia Bank. The one three nine. This one. One, two, three. Right. So it only has seven digits and it requesting 17 digits. All right. So, so I sorry. Uh, Hello? When all you're done, I'll ask my question. Oh. So okay, I'm now seeing your hands. Sorry guys. I see your hands Charles. I'll come to you right after it. So I know 17 digits might be um I know when it's transferring to Scotia they have a, a number before a transfer number or something like that. And I, I don't think Republic has so much numbers as well, but did you choose other bank by chance? Because yes, I did. Um, all right, so I may have to ask to investigate because I don't I don't know if they make changes to how to do to go about the process because I send this to a lot of persons who even had um Scotia Bank and they got through really well. So probably also, to do some more in, it, investigating. It should be about um no, I think the number yeah, that's yeah. missing is the branch number. Branch number. Yeah. Well, what what, yeah. what does happen is um each branch has a particular number. So let me say um you're going to put a spin branch, or the spin branch would have like a five-digit code before the bank, the account number. Now. So that no problem. we can differentiate between the branches. So what I'll do, I'll find out that number for you and send it across there, right? Okay, no problem. Thanks very much. Cool. Sorry, Jesus. Um Charles, before Jesus start, Charles, I saw your hand was up. Sorry. Hey, Charles, no? Was it up from before, I guess? It could go ahead, Jesus. 
Yeah, I was thinking I'll probably start in February instead, save up some money so I could pay the half down. Oh, okay. I uh, really, no I would like to do it. So I'll try to they stay could, in contact with you. We could still fill out the registration form and we could just put your information down for the next, well, for February. But it might be January. I don't have the exact dates yet. Um, mm. So once you get those dates, I'll probably send out a new email with the new dates. Where's your registration? If you want to, I could I just send it in the chat for you guys? I'm going to send it in the chat now, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you, we don't have ICT classes. We only have the BSc in IT. Level four payments. Yeah. Um. Let me just send this thing up in the chat first. And I'll go over that for you. Tell me if you guys actually know it's not this one. It's the same form, but use the second one. I'll delete this one. There you go. Oh, sorry, I, I directly sent this one. Right, so you guys see the form in the chat now? Yes, sir. I, I will send this entire presentation for you. Let me see if I could start it from right here. All right, so we just go back for a sec. Oh, there it is. So level four payment plan is here. We don't finish at level six. I want to do driving more security. Can you guys recommend a place where I can do it further? Oh, yeah, we can recommend it. Um, there are some cybersecurity masters as well, right locally here. I think it was I think it's Sam's and a few other places as well. We used to offer a short course in cybersecurity. I know we're gonna offer another one soon. Um, it could be look. It could look out for though that one as well. But yeah, we can we could recommend where um, you if you want to further it. Hey Charles, I saw you on me just now. What's up, Charles? You got two computer laptops that are being used. Um, the minimum spec. Um, I think you should have at least like eight gram. Um, eight gigs of RAM. And at least an i5 for um what's the AMD version now? Uh Ryzen 5. You won't you won't be doing a lot, but at the same time, you need to have enough like RAM to open Office and to have your like um what's that Microsoft thing called Visual Studio Code in the background open. All right, guys, so I want to thank you so much for being here and um, sticking through to the end. About these speakers, again, I'll leave this information up just so you guys can take a note of it. You can WhatsApp me, you can call me, um, you can send emails to us through one email and all of us will get it. No problem, David. Thanks for coming through. And if you don't have any more questions, I want to say, guys, have a great day. Take care and just be safe, right?